with Edgar and his friends and family from Gita and we want to use this opportunity to raise a little bit of awareness for hearing and diminished hearing and all of those things that come into play with our ears that we often forget are on the sides of our face. Very true. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> I can see yours nice and clearly. <laughs> So, Edgar, I need to understand a little bit more. First and foremost, GITA stands for Gibraltar. Hearing Issues and Tinnitus Association. Right. And I don't know whether you know this, but the three of us on the panel with tinnitus this evening, myself in my right ear, Susan, who suffers from it very badly, and Nicole, we all have tinnitus. So let's start there, for example, because that's one hearing issue yeah. and that's very popular of popular it's very it's common. common yeah <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> one in ten initially years gone by but it's actually becoming uh, i think it's one in seven at the moment one in seven mm. in gibraltar or worldwide globally yeah oh, right mm. okay so that's a lot um what does gita do let's step it back a little bit because we want to understand what the association is because some people call it an association another a club a group a support group a charity what's the difference who are gita we are everything as you can see <laughs> i can see lots of words on this shirt well basically we started um <clears throat> Uh, as a as a charity, like uh, giving support, because we found different members, uh, committee members that we started to, you know, our team, that we joined forces to change Gibraltar and change the mindset. Uh, we found out that uh, people needed support. There was certain there was lack of awareness in in treatment in therapy, and. Uh, at the time when we started in 2008, the GHA was failing us quite a lot. Okay. So, um... How were we, they we, failing you? Sorry. How, how were they failing? Were the resources there? Well, no, no, the resources weren't there. For example, it's... Now it's like completely opposite to what was then. But then, there was one audiologist. There had been the same audiologist, one person for 35 years to cater for the whole of Gibraltar. Wow. Okay. And the audiology... Uh, and Michelle can actually add that, was just like a matchbox in the ICC. And, and they were miles away from the ENTs. There was a difficult in communication, the real paper heavy, you know, no emails, no. Right. So now with your new audiology suite, it's all on the same floor. So referrals and, you know, you, they can pop over and see a, 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 a patient quickly and book them out. So the whole process, yes, is, is speeded. So Gita has taken that on board and that you've ris you, you, you raise a lot of awareness and there's right, lots awareness. of different hearing yeah, issues, yeah. isn't there? We, we, we raise awareness to the community and powers that be. And we lobby with government, telling them what, 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 what investment is needed in, yeah. in what areas. And, um, and we also try to give support to our our members, <clears throat> sorry, our members, uh, given because um, everyone has gone through their own journey, and we have created WhatsApp groups, each for each uh, with this um, for cochlear implants, this for tinnitus, this for Meniere's disease, uh, for for BSL, and we try to uh, target each niche and help them, and we help between ourselves as well, right? Doing our hints and. Um, yeah. So the first part of this year has actually been rather busy for you. You've had uh, a hearing day. What's it called? Yeah, a world Health, world hearing day. World hearing day. Yeah, we, you... we use that as as a as a marker to start our hearing loss week. Right. And then shortly after, we've got a sign language week. Right. So and, how... uh, and in February, we actually had a tinnitus. Uh, That's what well. I mean. yeah. So you've had three different, you've yeah. been very, very busy as a group. <laughs> no, you've all had loads to do, and you've been out in the town constantly spreading the word. <laughs> you tried, no? Well, in, in Jib, it's easy to spread the word, no? So tell me a little bit about the different hearing issues, because I want to talk to Michelle in, in a little bit, because there is a first port of call. Now, deafness can come at any age. Correct. But I think probably, if you can't vocalise, a mother will be very um, 
concerned about her children's hearing. I remember taking my kids for their hearing tests and one of my sons was subjected to measles, I think, and there was a risk that he could lose his hearing. So he had an audiology test uh, done early on. So let's take it from birth to losing your hearing naturally mm -hmm. at an older age. Are geese are covering all of those The whole issues? spectrum, indeed. Right, okay. So what would you do with uh, children who are newborn? What are you looking out for? Well, I got, I got parents saying that they suspect um, the children might have a hearing loss and I, direct them to, for them to speak with, uh, with the GP. The GP would uh, refer them to the audiologist and they would do a, a, a kid's uh, hearing test. Okay. And, uh, and that's, I channel people, if, um, we, have, uh, we facilitate. Right, yeah. so they can contact you. And yeah. we, or, any, or any one of our team. Yeah. Any one of your team. Mm -hmm. You basically are pointing them in the right direction because by the words on your chest, Edgar, <laughs> there's a lot going on there. Like Rehabilitation officers, deafness, hypercososis, I can't say that. Sensitivity uh, to sound. Ah, right. Oh, I, I've, got, I've got hypersensitivity to sound. Uh, you've got your BSL, you keep pushing that. Tell me about BSL, because that's, that's really important, isn't it? How is Gibraltar progressing? Are people, are, is it available in schools? How are you raising the awareness for that kind of thing? I'm raising awareness, but uh, I feel that there should be a more coordinated approach with the Department of Education and for the government to actually back uh, British Sign Language in, in, in schools. Um, all, remember that British Sign Language is, uh, is a sign, lang sign language for the deaf or the profoundly deaf. But um, people have the, the misconception that you only need sign language if you cannot hear totally, when sign language really complements okay. if you partially hear. So it, it should be encouraged and it could be a career move for for one of our youths. That is a really good yeah. idea. So we could... Have homegrown talent, homegrown interpreters, yeah. for, for, for example, yeah. What do you think are the main gripes of our profoundly deaf in Gibraltar or those who have hearing difficulties? What, what doesn't work for them in Gib? Well, basically, if you cannot... Communication is mainly spoken and people will, will, will need subtitles and the, the main source of, of information is our, our TV. So there is a huge sector of, of, of Gibraltar that misses out because we haven't got any subtitles. Um, you add into that, there is no sign language on, on the TV. So that really government that. should invest on, on GBC and put things right. So, yeah. O only today there were I had my uh, some some members from the the deaf BSL community complaining that in the inquiry there were no subtitles or no even right. a, an interpreter, and and they are totally in the dark of what's going on there. Right, so it's yeah. very important that they it did, it did. have some access to information in a yeah. way that they understand. And I know I know GBC due to our limited resources are trying their best. You you did a fantastic job during election time, because I know in post-production you put subtitles and there was a lot of people were welcoming that. Uh, welcome it, welcoming to the extent that they expected it to continue. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get there. Well, I'm sure. I'm, re I'm really hopeful that you will. <laughs> so what is Gita doing for the future then? Let's let's boost your, your, your position in JIP. What, what do people have? Uh, to look forward to in the coming months? Have you got more fundraisers coming up or anything well, like that? Well, we usually around the summertime we have our social that we do use it at the same time as a, as a fundraiser. So uh, we'll be selling tickets and yeah. And, um, and, and at the moment I've, I've, uh, there will be big news that, that will come to like in, in, in the future. At the moment I cannot actually say anything, but just stay tuned. Very no important. spoilers on the panel no spoilers, run. I'm not no having spoilers. you again. <laughs> <laughs> but one big change that you welcomed very, very recently is, of course, um, Christian Santos. 
Yes, who is yes, yes. now bringing uh, BSL to all the tourist sites. Indeed, indeed. That's incredible. It's that's, that's absolutely great. incredible. And I got to, I got to add that in, in, with Christian, we found a real champion of people with uh, special needs and, and, and he's taken our cause and he's put in he, you know, his actions, his words into action, let's put it that way. Yeah. And yes, I'm really pleased that he's introduced sign language in the historical sites, not only for the, the BSL users in Gibraltar, for them to learn about our community, but it's also a, a good niche to actually uh, try to invite uh, visitors from the UK who use sign language and they will put Gibraltar as a place of choice. How big is your community now? Our community, uh, in total, you mean like our, our membership? Yeah. Right. Well, we, if we talk about our traditional membership, we are about in 120 people. If we're talking about social media, uh, together with uh, Instagram, T Twitter, and Facebook, I would say we are around 1,300. Right, so, and, and the deaf community is, is are, are they all um, having issues or as part of your members, or is it all family and friends as well that, that raise and rally round? We've got both, yeah. We, we, look, we, our, our membership is not just the people experiencing the, the hearing loss, but also family and friends who they feel strong that, you know, that this sector of community is not understood or are not taken care of as they would have liked. With regards to the hearing aids and things like that, I mean, you, you, you don't have statistics as such, but you do know that there are how many, uh, more or less? We, we suspect that, that we, it's 5% uh, of the world population suffers from dis disabling hearing loss. Right. You put transpose that to Gibraltar population of 34,400, that works out at 1,700. That's, that's a lot. Yeah. And the fact is, is that it doesn't stop, it grows because as we age, we do lose our yeah. hearing naturally. He hearing doesn't get better, it gets yeah. worse. It doesn't discriminate, <laughs> as they say. You know, we live in, in probably, I'm not going to say the noisiest, but a very, very, very noisy place um, where I am at the end of Devil's Tower Road between the traffic on one side at this ear and the aircraft on this ear. It is non-stop. There's no peace and quiet. And I've often seen you in areas like the um, the GMF and things like that, handing out um, your little uh, earbuds. earbuds and stuff yeah. like that. Do people react well to that? Do they take they them do. out of being polite, or they do they do. actually take on board what you're no, saying? They, they, you find all kinds, all kinds. You can find small, small kids that just play with them, like oh, they're sweets. Yeah. <laughs> and others that are just like like the security guards for for you know, they will come to me saying. I've been here for four hours, I just can't stand it anymore. Can I, can I, the noise. Well, the, on the noise, yeah. Because uh, fortunately, you know, um, the health and safety, the police, you know, or the implementing health and safety in, in the leisure sound environment, they're not really uh, so they taking it on board. They're not taking the decibel level that you should. Nobody's no. coming to check. Nobody's coming to check, but also the, the, the people in the leisure industry you know, the waiters, the DJs, the security guards, like I mentioned, you know, they are all the time exposed to it, but they're not wearing pr uh, protective equipment. They're not, wear they're not protecting they're their not ears. They're not ear defenders or, or earplugs. Yeah. That is so dangerous. I mean, yeah. oh. And you've got to, re all, all of you have to remember that uh, noise induced hearing damage is preventable if you protect exactly. your ears. And it's the main cause of hearing loss, being exposed to loud sounds. That's lounge. the main cause. Yeah. And for all of you uh, uh, viewers out there, when you use AirPods, if you use their volume at maximum, mm -hmm. and many do because I can hear them even <laughs> can hear them in the, the music, that will be 100 decibels. Wow. So that means after three minutes, you're already causing damage. That is such a good tip because yeah. I had heard that if you pass somebody with any kind of earphone on, if you can hear what they are hearing, it's already too loud. Yeah. I'm going to ask the girls if they have any questions for you. 
I, do, I would just like to comment. Well, Edgar was my first port of call when I had my onset of tinnitus and my partial hearing loss. Edgar was the man. And really thank you. I know I thank you many times, but I thank you again, Burke. It was important. <laughs> but I do want to highlight something that connected to the tinnitus and maybe to the hearing loss. Mental health. It's not addressed. And many times you find yourself, as we know, tinnitus sufferers, you know, it's and, and hearing loss, they make no kusha. And it's, you know, unfortunately, the mental health situation in Gerald is not fabulous. And this is just an offshoot. It's mm -hmm. importante in a way, because I mean you're suffering a lot of people with hair mental health. But this is something that, you know, tinnitus sufferers could do with some help psychologically to, to deal with it. So just wanted to highlight that because it's always pushed aside. And up here, you know, the gomer coco with the noise, it's, it's terrible. It's something that can really influence your life in a bad way. Yeah, I would, I would like to carry on from that. that yes, I, I'm finding that when treating tinnitus, there's an over-reliance of prescribing you uh, sleeping pills, for, uh, for, for example, rather than giving you some uh, professional counseling to actually cope, how yeah. to, uh, yes. strategies, how to cope with having a chronic sound in your head all the time. Yeah, yeah. and tinnitus does come in all, I mean, uh, my tinnitus, it, it, it can be kicked off by different things. Mine in particular, I noticed that after I went through COVID, Two weeks later, I started with the noise, and I haven't. It hasn't stopped since. Um, if I'm distracted, I don't notice as, as much as when I go to bed when it seems so much louder. Has there been a lot of reports that COVID infections have affected the ears? Yes, yes, they have. Um, um, I don't know how reputable they are, considering the <laughs> conspiracy, <laughs> conspiracy theories. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, the, the, there's been, and especially in the, my experience of the feedback I've been getting from the general public, is that not just tinnitus, but hearing loss as well. Right. Has been, they, they say that has the actual vaccinations had an, eff an effect on them, okay. or the actual the symptoms of the disease also had an effect on them. So yes, hearing loss and tinnitus has been on the increase post-COVID. Interesting facts. Nicole, yours was ear infections. Yeah, um, I believe that ours is hereditary. There's a lot of family members that have tinnitus. My mum suffered from it greatly. Um, I know my dad, and you know, my dad, my dad searched high and low and. Um, and the white noise to prevent went to Belgium, the doctor, uh, so you're no stranger to that. But um, it's it's just sometimes so debilitating. Um, I, I, I got an ear infection uh, as an older person. Um, I wasn't aware that I had an ear infection and until I got a burst eardrum, then I knew. I just had a pain and the doctor brushed it aside. Nobody's fault, things that happen, la vida, no? Um, but because of that, I got a second noise. I always had a, like a like a switched at the end of a program TV noise, and maybe that was because it's hereditary. My grandfather had it. My mom, my cousin, my other cousin, my brothers got it really bad. Uh, but then the second noise came, which is like the the, the sharp uh, sound, um, and it was due to that. There's hearing loss also because of that. But then again, it could be a hereditary thing because my grandfather had hearing loss. And that uh, could be hereditary as well? Yes, you heard that? hearing loss, can, uh, some, some hearing loss conditions can be hereditary. I'm sure Michelle can uh, so elaborate. So I'm not going to have time to talk to you, Michelle, <laughs> but you're happy about that because you didn't want to talk to me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to thank you all for coming. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, having you here. And Edgar, you are all over Facebook. There is no excuse to not be able to come and learn more from you and uh, your lovely people. And I'm going to do a good night now. And I'm going to uh, thank you and say good night. See you next week. <laughs>